this is all about, you know, starting and scaling. And I guess my mantra on starting and scaling, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Um, and what I'm going to really cover in this like lightning talk is just a bit of a, a journey of why I started the dots, but then I guess the most important things that I've learned about starting and scaling a business. So um, for those of you that don't know, and uh, you know, I've founded the business about four or five years ago here in the UK, um, but a bit of background. Um, I studied maths and economics at university, but I spent most of my career in the creative industries. Um, and the, the dots is actually my second startup. I started my first startup in Australia called The Loop. A um, couple of fun facts. Uh, I'm tuning in from my houseboat, Horace, where I actually started the business. Um, and I'm also dyslexic. And the reason I mention this in talks is uh, sometimes I model words, so huge apologies. Um, but fun fact for anyone that's dyslexic who's tuning in, 35% of entrepreneurs are dyslexic and 40% of self-made millionaires. So congratulations, it's a superpower. So yeah, just a little bit of a, a background of why I started the platform. So I'm I'm a non-tech tech founder. So I didn't I didn't study computer science at university. I just kind of saw a real world problem and uh, maybe somewhat naively wanted to create a solution. Um, really, what I recognised is I guess the world of work has changed forever. Um, you know, flexible working is here to stay. There's the rise of freelance and the gig economy. And I guess, you know, the only real professional network or professional network at scale that existed um, before the dots was LinkedIn, uh, which for me is just built around a very corporate, linear, uh, old way of working. So I wanted to create a different solution. Um, but on a deeper level, what I realized is that, you know, people wanted different things in their career. They actually wanted to love the jobs they do, wanted to work with people they valued and actually wanted purpose and a meaning in their career. So, so yeah, I started a different version of professional networking that's, I guess, geared to that future workforce. Um, so for those that don't know the dots, um, yeah, Apple called us networking for the modern world. Um, the way we support our communities, we help them connect with like-minded people. We help them promote themselves. But instead of promoting yourself via a CV, people post projects and then credit the full team around those projects. So for example, a project could be an app and you credit the front-end developer, the back-end developer, the head of growth, et cetera. Um, but I guess the core values we bring to our community is helping them learn the skills of the future, helping them find flexible work and collaborate. Um, as I said, I started the business here on my houseboat and uh, we've grown to over 600,000 members now uh, and we work with around 10,000 companies that use us to hire talent. Um, but I guess at the heart of everything I've created is trying to create an antithesis to the existing social media sites that exist today. Um, you know, I, I I hate how, you know, Facebook, Twitter have become just places of fake news and negativity. So big differences between us is our algorithm is actually based on positivity. So the kinder you are on the dots, the higher you come up in search results. Um, and we also do a lot of work around diversity. So I love men, by the way, uh, but 68% of our community are female, 31% uh, BAME, 16% LGBT, and we do a lot of work around neurodiversity and socioeconomic movement as well. Um, but it's not been an easy journey um, for me. You know, I've had to literally learn everything from scratch. You know, I. As I said, I don't have a computer science degree. And I think this is a good summary of like the journey I've been through from starting and scaling a business. So this is my happy, sad graph. Um, everything at the top is when I'm on cloud nine. Oh my gosh, this is the best thing I've ever done. Um, we're gonna take over the world and we're gonna be the next LinkedIn. Um, everything in the bottom is, oh my gosh, what have I done? I am so out of my depth. I'm crying on my husband's shoulder. Um, Interestingly, from an outside perspective, um, you know, it's it looks like it's been a really easy journey for us. You know, we got product market fit quite early on. Um, we've got a working business model. Uh, we've, you know, over 600,000 members. Um, so, you know, from an outsider's perspective, it looks like it's a, a lovely, happy journey. Um, the reality of what I've been through and every 
startup has been through, whether they admit it or not, is actually this. Um, so this is my <laughs> insane roller coaster ride. I mean, I have never been so happy in my entire life, and I have never been so out of my depth in my entire life. Now, I won't go through all the highs and lows, but I guess a key takeout for me with all of this has been, you know, perseverance has been key to this journey. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, this is my second business. Um, I started my first startup in Australia. So you see that really low area, the split area. Um, I had, I had, I went through probably one of the, the hardest thing a founder could ever go through as I had a split with my first co-founder in Australia and had to start again from scratch over here. So I've gone from startup to scale up, back to startup, to scale up again. Um, and it's been one hell of a journey and I've learned so much along the way. Um, so yeah, as I just said, I started the dots here on Horace, my houseboat, and here are my kind of core or lightning speed um, learnings. Um, the first, I guess, and most important thing is anyone who scales a business goes through really tough, tough times. And the key to weathering those tough times has been persevering through those tough times. Uh, you have to find deep wells of resilience to get through um, starting and scaling a business. Um, and I guess the way I've found deep wells of resilience is I've managed to combine what they call, it's a Japanese philosophy, it's like itiyagi, ikiyagi, sorry, that's my dyslexia, I have no idea how to pronounce it. Um, but what I've been lucky to combine is doing what I truly love doing um, with what I'm good at. Um, with what I get paid for, because we all need to eat, but most importantly, what the world needs and the purpose and the mission behind the dots, helping democratize talent, helping companies connect with diverse talent, and also building a positive and inclusive social network is what drives me every day. And it means that when the hard times come, that purpose has pushed me through to get through those hard times and not give up and I would highly recommend if you can build social purpose into your business it makes those hard times so much better um I guess the other thing that I've learned is you know tech is fundamentally important when you're scaling a tech business and so is the product but it's the people and the communities we serve that are the most important thing as founders we need to obsess about them more than anything else and then ensure we're building a product and the tech solutions that are around real world problems and as i said social problems are the ones that we all have a responsibility especially in this day and age to help solve another fundamental learning and i mentor quite a few founders um, i find that when people start businesses um, they jump straight to marketing before product market fit. And I think the most important thing to get right is product market fit before even thinking about marketing and especially before spending any money on marketing. Um, feedback from my community has been the most invaluable thing I've ever had. You know, we are constantly communicating with our community about advice from how can we improve the platform, which countries to launch in, and I'm always doing posts on the dots to get that feedback. Um, and if you're looking for product market fit, there's actually a brilliant um, uh, survey that you can do to your members, um, which was done by the crew at Superhuman. Just Google Superhuman product market fit survey, and it's a really good way to gauge if you are at product market fit yet. Um, if you're not, all your time should be spent on getting to product market fit. If you are, that's the moment that you can start marketing and scaling your business. The other really important thing that I've, 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 I've like, I guess is probably one of the reasons I'm in business is I have surrounded myself with the most incredible mentors. Um, and I used to think that I could have like one mentor that was going to solve all of my problems, but I came to realize that actually there's no one is good at everything. And if you want a market specialist, they're not 
they might be great at tech, but they're not going to be good at raising investment or as good as someone who could advise on amazing investment. So now what I have, I guess, is a huge portfolio of mentors that specialize in different areas that I'm struggling with. So whether that's growth or marketing or branding or tech. And then I call on those mentors when I'm, I'm having challenges. And I might tap to them like five times in one week when I'm having problems and then leave them in peace for the rest of the time. And I would highly recommend a portfolio approach to mentorship. Um, top tip for any female entrepreneurs that are listening as well. I found it incredibly hard to get female mentors, even though I was desperate to, because the reality is there just aren't enough female in women in senior ranks in tech. It is changing, thank goodness, but there aren't. So top tip for women uh, tuning in. If you want the best in the business when it comes to mentors, um, I'd highly advise going after senior men in tech, um, but the ones with daughters, because they're the ones that want to see change. Um, the other obviously important thing I've learned along the way is, you know, scaling a business is all about the team you put around you. You can't be good at everything. And the most important thing when it comes to hiring team members is firstly, hire positive people that focus on solutions, not problems. When you're scaling, the last thing you need is people moaning or politics coming into your business. Um, so focusing and really focusing on hiring people that um, find solutions, not problems, will really help in the long haul. It also you know, means that you'll end up with a really positive working environment, which will make coming to work each day a pure joy. I guess the other hugely important thing is never hire people like yourself. You already exist. And we tend to try and hire for culture fit, or we tend to hire people in our own image. That is the opposite of what you should do. Um, and to that point, diversity is the key to innovation. It's been proven to be uh, better for profitability, better for creativity, better for innovation. You want lots and lots of different people in your business that challenge each other positively. Um, so you can build products for everyone, not just yourself. Um, with that in mind, I guess, you know, you can't be good at everything, but you are going to have to learn a lot. So, you know, I have had to cultivate an insatiable appetite to learn. I read probably a business book a week. Um, I'm dyslexic, so reading is quite challenging. So I listen to audio books, but here are some of my favorites. Um, the other really important thing I've learned along the way is I have seen so many businesses fail, not because they didn't have a brilliant idea or a brilliant team, but they didn't have the right support at home. And the last thing you need when you're scaling a business are friends or family or your partner nagging you to stop working or not giving it your all or saying, why don't you just give up? Um, so this is a picture of my husband. Um, and it's been as important getting my husband on this journey as it has been my team and my investors, because I need someone at home that's got my back and said, you got this. And then to close, I guess I'm going to lean on this amazing man, Seth Godin, who is doing a talk today, which I'm so excited about. But I guess Seth in one of his videos says like starting and scaling a business is a bit like those children's balloons, you know, those really long ones that you're puffing and puffing and it's really hard to blow up um, but what happens is suddenly it inflates more and it gets easier and easier and that's what I've learned along the way it is bloody hard but the more you learn the more you surround yourself with brilliant people the easier it is along the way um, so that's me thank you <laughs> thank you so much for that Pip uh, yeah there's tons of stuff for people to take away there I love how open and honest you are about uh, the, the the progress you guys have made, the challenges which you faced, and I love that roller coaster that you showed. That the reality for anyone in any kind of walk of life or business, I think. Um, so, Pip, just before you go, I have to press you for the fifteen second summary. If you could summarize the key takeaway from your talk today in fifteen seconds, uh, what would it be? I, I would say if you can create businesses with social purpose, because that will help you through the hard times and team is everything and diversity matters.